Okay, we're here live back at the uh, Velocity Conference here live in Santa Clara, California. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. And Al Sargent is here. He's the director of product marketing at Pivotal on the app fabric. As you know, Pivotal has been covered extensively by Silicon Angle, and of course, on the research side with Wikibon.org. Recently announcing the, uh, the, all the new data around the industrial cloud, and we were at the Pivotal, Amazon, and GE event on uh, Tuesday this week. Um, all that footage is available on Silicon Angle's YouTube page, youtube.com slash Silicon Angle. And uh, you know, this brings up the uh, VMware conversation. VMware recently spun out Pivotal as a separate company to go out on its own and to go out and, and, and pioneer what really is, a, is the high demand. And that's being talked about here at the Velocity Conference. So Al, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Good to be here. So, you know, obviously the, the performance discussion is really about, you know, web performance, mobile performance. It's all going to kind of be blended in. The word mobile won't be even talked about in just in, in a year or two, in my opinion, and being talked about here. But really, open source is driving it. Um, you guys have spun out all the elements of what was once VMware Spring, Cetus, Greenplum, Pivotal, all rolled into one. Mm -hmm to really go after that developer market, and that's what's here at Velocity. So, what's your take here about Velocity, and what are you guys doing here? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, you know, I think really what the mission of Pivotal is to enable the consumer internet, and basically take these best practices that you have in consumer internet companies and drive them into the enterprise. So you can basically have you know, your own Google grade, or Yahoo grade, or Facebook grade, type of infrastructure. And so when you look at what we're doing at Pivotal, uh, one of the things we're focusing on is Pivotal One. And Pivotal One splits into three different parts. You have your Pivotal application fabric, Pivotal data fabric, and Pivotal cloud fabric. And so essentially what you have is the way the different buckets, the things that fit in there. You have Spring, things like Spring and RabbitMQ in the application fabric. Uh, things like CTES and Pivotal HD and Greenplum in the data fabric and then things like uh, Cloud Foundry in our Cloud Fabric. So when you look at how all that applies to, you know, in terms of the mission of Velocity, building a faster and stronger web, there's a huge amount of alignment because what a lot of these consumer web companies have to do is they have to run quickly. They have to run 24 seven. They have hundreds of millions of users. And so we're all about taking those best practices uh, and applying them to the enterprise. And again, that's exactly the mission, so our mission and Velocity's mission really are in alignment. Yeah, obviously I wrote a lot extensively about the pivotal spin out mm -hmm. of uh, VMware. Obviously we had Leo Spiegel on the Cube, mm -hmm. um, and he was the mastermind behind that uh, with, uh, with Paul Moritz, obviously Pat Gelsinger, Joe Tucci, kind of the federation, if you will. But what's interesting mm -hmm. is, is that you know, in 2010, mm -hmm. Paul Moritz laid out VMware when he was the CEO of VMware. The, the, the architecture of, he called software mainframe, some call it other things, but at the end of the day, the cloud and what we're seeing today. Yep. But the top of the stack just didn't materialize within VMware, mainly because of a lot of stuff going on in the business. I mean, hypervisor commoditization, um, cloud was, was very competitive, but by bringing Pivotal out separately, you're decoupling that in a good way and making it very cohesive, meaning, you know, from an from a opportunity standpoint, you now can go after and compete and win with product in that developer community. What are you guys doing that's, that's really the most relevant if you could share to really help the developers who want to build a great UX, great user experience, and yet be competitive in a, in a DevOps world? Yeah, I think there's a couple things uh, that we're doing. First thing is, you know, we have an incredibly uh, deep focus on the Spring Java framework. And you know, Spring has been around for 10 years or so and it might not be the thing that first comes to mind, but one of the things we're doing with Spring 4 that we're going to be announcing uh, actually here at the uh, Santa Clara Convention Center in September uh, and going into detail on is we're going to be talking about you know, how, to make, how Spring enables you to build applications easier than ever before with very small amounts of configuration, with easy connectivity into uh, big data programming models. And that last one, we have a project called Spring HD and what we do is we, we see a really big parallel to what was happening a decade ago with the Enterprise Java Bean or EJB programming model where it's just complete pain for developers. Uh, and Spring arose out of that as an easier way to build applications without all the pain of EJB. What we see today is something similar where you know, with Hadoop, it's really, really difficult to program against. Spring XD uh, is going to make that a lot easier to program. So we're going to be detailing that, and that's going to be a really critical thing for developers. How do you make it easier and faster 
to build applications that go against these uh, big data data sources. So that's one thing. Another thing is that Pivotal Labs, we have a very strong focus in terms of not just Java, but other languages like Ruby, Python, Node, et cetera. And then you're also seeing <clears throat> a lot of focus in terms of being polyglot. So for instance, RabbitMQ, Redis, these are two uh, pivotal products. Those can work not only with Java, not only with c .net, but also Node, Ruby, Python, Scala, you name it. So lots of things we're doing for developers to make them more productive. What do you see that's important that you, that you could articulate to the audience out there about what the Velocity Conference is trying to do here? Because it's not a one trick pony, it's not a one thing, it's not a cloud show, it's not mm -hmm. a DevOps show, it's not just mm -hmm. a UX show. What is, a, what is it about Velocity that makes it unique that really points to this modern era of computing the data center, service providers, developers? Yeah, I think what I like about Velocity is the fact that it's focused on solving a particular problem building a faster and stronger web. I mean, that, that's probably one of the most, you know, in my mind anyway, most compelling types of taglines for a conference because it's not all about, you know, XYZ database type solution or XYZ language. It's, hey, let's, you know, up-level it into the needs of the user, the needs of the business, uh, the needs of IT, and how do we, you know, solve these problems for each of those three different groups of users. And so what that means is you know, performance and resilience and SLA compliance and all that, that cuts across a wide range of things. So it is going to be a type of show where you're going to have you know, a company like Pivotal with application servers and Hadoop distributions you know, here at the show with New Relic and AppDynamics, for instance, who do monitoring, who are going to be you know, with other people who focus on other aspects of performance. Because really, at the end of the day, performance covers a wide range of different types of categories of products and services. What is the update with Pivotal? Give us some, some insight into the Pivotal execution because it, it's, it's on people's minds and you know, one thing I pointed out on Tuesday when I was talking about the, uh, the, the uh, amazing announcement was is that you, know, you had Pivotal on stage with Amazon mm -hmm. with GE and that's a great, last year GE put in $105 million into Pivotal, so mm -hmm. that kind of helps. But you know, if Pivotal is part of VMware, you probably wouldn't have seen them on stage with Amazon. So you yes. know, we did point that out, but it's, it's a whole new era for you guys. So what's going on at Pivotal? Um, share some color, or what's, what's it like. There's the, yep. been real high satisfaction from the employee side, there's mm -hmm. been a good vibe, obviously stock options, and again, Leo, the corp dev guy, laid this all out. You know, they have stock options for the employees on both sides, and mm -hmm. just what's happening with Pivotal? Yeah, so I think, well first of all, one thing in, you know, is that we are very much multi-cloud, so obviously we're going to have a very strong focus um, on vSphere from VMware, and, and work really you know, excellently, work very well on VMware's uh, infrastructure. Obviously, we're going to work well on uh, Amazon, you know, cloudfoundry.com, our hosted service, runs on AWS, and you know, expect us to run on other types of infrastructure as well, such as OpenStack. So we are really very much looking at a multi-cloud type of focus, and, and frankly, you know, that's something that is much more difficult to do at VMware, uh, because VMware's rightful mission is to you know, promote vSphere. Um, so that's one thing, we are very much in terms of uh, multi-cloud. Another thing is that you know, we are very much uh, you know, focused very hard on you know, employee satisfaction. Uh, our new offices in San Francisco are a great place to work. Uh, lots of great you know, programs for the employees. We realize that it's a, you know, it's a very competitive market from a recruiting side. We have to be up there in the game as well. Uh, the third thing is that we're really driving hard towards Pivotal One. Uh, which we're going to be discussing later, hopefully. Don't take this uh, as a guarantee, but the hope is that we can talk <laughs> about this. Uh, of you know, course you're going to talk the about the Pivotal year. One, it's the main product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're basically you know, rolling everything into the Pivotal One banner and really driving towards one single team. And you think about, right, the history of this, right, we have people coming from VMware, we have people coming from EMC, we have Pivotal Labs people, uh, and so really we're driving hard towards you know, becoming one team and Pivotal One is really the, the banner under which we're all moving and we're saying, hey, how do we make Pivotal One give us you know, one common platform, one unified product set? So talk about the software-defined data center. Obviously that is a, uh, the, I'd say the dream, the, the moonshot. That's where everyone's trying to build the ladder to, to get to. Um, and I, I say hype in a good way. I don't mean to kind of put a diss on you guys or VMware. I mean, I love the, the software-defined data center because that's really a destination. Mm -hmm. You know, software-defined networking with VMware bought Nasir. Obviously we had Martin Casada on at VMworld and that has just been an amazing geek uh, mm -hmm. ev revolution where you're using virtualization. But now, you guys are now going to be part of that whole open source, scale out, developer community. So, mm -hmm. what's your view from that perspective of this software-defined 
fill in the blank. Software-defined storage, software-defined servers, software-defined networking, and now I'll say software-defined <laughs> applications are, or applications that take advantage of that converged yeah. infrastructure, or in this case, DevOps. Well, I think, I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. I mean, you do have software-defined net, networking with Nocera, you have software-defined storage, you have, obviously with VMware, you have, you know, our core product has been all about software-defined, uh, you know, compute and, and, uh, and memory. And what you can think of, the way Pivotal fits into the software-defined data center, is Pivotal provides software-defined application and data infrastructure, or software-defined application and data fabric, uh, where all of our stuff layers on top of this, the software-defined data center components that VMware provides, and you know, provides additional capabilities you know, in terms of application containers, and you know, Hadoop for querying, RabbitMQ for messaging, and so forth. What's, so, what's, what's the developer mindset? I mean, because obviously DevOps is obviously important. They don't want to do any infrastructure coding. Mm -hmm. um, Pivotal's gotten a good reputation in, as a company, and you guys got bought by VMware now, part of the Pivotal initiative. GoPivotal.com is the mm -hmm. website, but you know, now that's the brand umbrella for a lot of other components of Pivotal. Mm -hmm. But what do, how do you guys look at the developer community? What are you guys messaging to them? What is the key, key products that you're bringing to market? Yeah, so that's so. Developers are incredibly important to us, and uh, with the Spring framework, we you're going to see from us a renewed focus on Spring. Again, Spring four is something that we're driving towards. You know, I've talked about uh, Spring XD, for instance, Spring Cloud to make Spring run better on uh, Cloud Foundry. So you're going to see a lot of stuff uh, where we're making Spring better and better and better for developers. Um, and at the same time, one of the things we want to do is we want to make Spring, the, the getting started experience of Spring as easy as the getting, experience, getting started experience that you'd have for a Ruby or a Python or a Node. Um, and I think you know, Spring has gained a lot of traction by being you know, better than JEE or, or easier to get started with than JEE, at least that's what people tell us. Um, and so we're, you know, we're, of course we want to continue to do that and, and continue to maintain our lead over JEE. But what we also want to do is we want to you know, look at these uh, other newer interpreted languages that I just mentioned and make sure that our getting started experience is at least as good as theirs. Um, because at the end of the day, developers, I mean, Paul Moritz always says, developers are the new king makers, and we've taken that to heart. Where at the end of the day, it's their hands in the keyboard, it's, it's their hands that determine what stuff gets used and determines what servers are getting uh, deployed into production. So are you guys still going to be invited to VMworld? Yes, we are. <laughs> they haven't kicked us out yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not no, yet. We're, we're going to see you there. The Cube will be at, at the VM World, so uh, we're excited to uh, have more conversations with you. Um, Al Sargent, who's Director of Product uh, Marketing. I'll see you on the uh, App Fabric, but they got the App Fabric, Cloud Fabric, Data Fabric. Um, great vision, we'll see how it plays out. Again, ex uh, vision without execution is hallucination, as was said on theCUBE last week uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, good luck with that, thanks for coming on theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you, John. <laughs>